May reading wrap up and book bucket list. I read way more books than I thought I was going to in May. I didn't think I would get through my TBR and technically I didn't but I read more books than were on my TBR so that was kind of fun. Basically you're gonna try to go over them in the order I read them. I think that's how I wrote them down but to start off with the book bucket list if you aren't sure what this is I will link the like video explaining what it is. I only ended up having one and I'll talk about it when I get to that book but it came from Swift and Saddled which is by Lila Sage so that one seems really fun and I'm very excited about that but there wasn't anything in any of the other books that I actually felt like I would want to take and have happen in my real life so I'm just gonna kind of give you an overall review of the books that I read in May. I started with Spark of the Everflame by Penn Cole. This is on Kindle Unlimited. It's a series, an ongoing series, I believe. This was recommended to me. This, there was one part in this book where it started to slow and I wasn't sure if like it was gonna be for me, but it ended on such a good note. This was definitely like a four out of five stars. It was so good. I really like DM and Luther. I hope I'm saying her name right, the main female character's name. Henry was not my favorite. I think the author's like Insta bio says that he she like loves him. Like she definitely likes Henry, but I don't. I didn't really like reading their parts, their exchanges in the book, but I did really enjoy reading her and Luther's exchanges in the book. This is basically a woman who is a healer, but not like magical or anything. And she is kind of in this world where humans are like poor, they're not part of the ruling class, which in this book is the descended royalty, which Luther is a part of. But because DM has abilities to do healing work, she gets to kind of go into the castle this also is spurred on by the fact that her mom is missing and kind of presumed dead. This isn't a spoiler, you find this out right away. There's a lot going on in this book and I thought it was done really really well. It was really entertaining. I'm very excited to read the next book. I'm just not overly in a fantasy mood right now. However, I did really really like the way it ended. It's very interesting to watch her kind of try to figure out who she wants to be aligned with as far as like alliances and what looks like a silent war that is approaching. So I did really like that aspect of it. I really liked the characters. I thought it was really intriguing. It was a good book. So if you're looking for a romanticy read, I would recommend that one. I think it's really popular and being recommended a lot anyway, but I did really like it. The next book I read was Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. I buddy read this with Reads with Shuba and Debate Books it is also part of the buddy read. This has been very fun for me. This is the sequel. This is the second book in what I think is supposed to be a trilogy. It might not be. The next book doesn't come out until next year, but it's part of the Legendborn Cycle series and this was amazing. I think a lot of people probably feel like this book has a lot more info and a lot to keep up with but I actually really liked that. I really enjoyed that there was just so much going on. The only thing I will say with this book is it is sad. There is a lot going on and there's kind of no winning for your characters and it does build up the plot so that you're kind of entering the third book when it comes out and you just know that well it ends on a cliffhanger but you're excited to read the first book it sets up the or this, the third book it sets up the third book to be really really good so i am very excited for that because that's only what <laughs> half a year away in this case uh if you don't know what legendborn is it's basically a young girl brie matthews she's in like a high achievers program through the north carolina university and she ends up entering a again this is another fantasy maybe kind of romanticy but this is YA she ends up entering the world of the legendborn which is kind of like a secret society and kind of all hell breaks loose from there literally this is full of like demons magic a couple different magic systems that are explained really really well but really powerful characters this is actually a really diverse book i think i have a full book review for both books one and two if you're interested in that but it is a really fascinating book i think i said in the review that i wish this is the kind of books that you got to read in school it's way more interesting and way more worth writing 
like papers and whatnot on, especially when you're that age. After that, I read The Body Artist by Don Delilo. Delilo, I'm not sure still. This was a book I took out from my library. I did a library reading vlog on that one as well. This was a really weird book. Like, she, her husband leaves her and dies and she kind of has like a mental breakdown and there's someone else living in the house with her who is like not well probably belongs at like a psych ward and she is kind of like taking advantage of him she's kind of losing her mind for her like art or like artistry and her craft even her friend is like saying how it's unbelievable how much she's able to transform into other people. This book definitely made me think of like the movie, I think it's called Split, where he has multiple personalities. It was a weird book. Not what I was expecting because I went into it thinking that it was supposed to be like stories about love, a story about love and grief and like those processes. Not really. I don't think so. I guess it could be for sure if you kind of have a full-on breakdown and that's what happens. I can see how your mental health would be impacted really badly this was just a really odd book it honestly it did make me think that it was something you'd probably read in university just the way it was written the whole time I was like this is out of my I'm out of my depth reading this like I understood what I was reading but at the same time it's like a book that you're supposed to analyze and critique and really dive into the symbolism of things like the birds and it's just that's not really what I enjoy with books when I'm reading but it was a good read if you're interested in something really weird probably a little more serious just totally different I would recommend that I didn't rate it because I'm not someone who usually reads books like this I don't write critical essays on books uh, or even really overly critical reviews I just like reading for fun so Anyway, that was an interesting book from the local library, one of the English ones, so that was just a really fun experience. And then <laughs> I read a couple of books by Penelope Douglas, if you know, you know. So I read Credence and Birthday Girl. These were not on my TBR. I wanted to read Credence because I see it everywhere. I did not know what I was getting into. You need to check your trigger warnings, content warnings before you read that. I'm not gonna go into too much depth on this book, just cause it's pretty popular. You can look up what it's about, but um, what the, f like the people in this book are out of their minds. Like it, don't get me wrong. These, her books are clearly page turners. Like you just wanna keep reading, but it's one of those things where it's like, it's a page turner for all the wrong <laughs> reasons. And yeah, it was just, I think I'm pretty sure that would be classified maybe as dark romance. I don't know if that's classified as dark romance. It, they are spicy. So if you're looking for something like that, you could try that. I think Credence is really popular by her. Same with Birthday Girl and they're both on Kindle Unlimited. I mostly got into this because it was my birthday month and I thought, oh, why not? I'll read Birthday Girl. Just be prepared. These are very spicy and there are topics that I think you want to check the content warnings on, which she has them on her website. It says in the front page to look up them, to look at them. If you're unsure, it's always a good idea to protect your mental health. For me, nothing, I didn't feel like I necessarily would have needed the content warnings. Whereas like when I read Haunting and Hunting Adeline, it was good that I read the content warnings beforehand. So, I mean, it's up to you. I don't think on dark romance level that it's nearly that level. And I think you can probably get darker than those two. So it's kind of just, if you like that genre, you might like those books. I've heard that people that like that genre really like Credence. So yeah, just wasn't really, like I said, page journey, not really my cup of tea. Fun, I think, to break up more serious books and have like a really easy read. But other than that, they're not my favorite. Then I read The Bridge Kingdom by Daniel L. Jensen. This is also on Kindle Unlimited. This is basically an arranged marriage where the female main character, Laura, is trying to... She's like a trained assassin and she's trying to infiltrate the bridge kingdom that Aaron, the main male character, is like king of and she's married to him through like a peace agreement between their two continents, countries, whatever you want to call them. She's basically supposed to find out everything she can about the Bridge Kingdom and how you can infiltrate it so that her 
like kingdom can take over but she starts to realize that her allegiances and her loyalty may not be in the right place. This book actually did fall a little bit flat for me but I was told to keep reading because the series gets really really good so I'm not sure what to think about it yet. I think I am going to do a bit of a book review on the three romanticies I read this month to just do them together like a deep dive. Like I said I've heard that the series gets really good. The first book just wasn't my favorite and I felt like Laura was literally always wet for some reason and it was always pointed out that like her clothes were see-through and she was wet. It's like, okay, we get it. Like, is there anything else to her character? I don't know. Like it, there were just things that weren't my favorite and fell a little flat for me. Still really good romanticy. I think I still rated it like three out of five. It just wasn't my favorite comparatively, especially when I read Spark of the Everflame and Serpent and the Serpent and the Wings of Night in May. It just didn't really meet the level of the other two. And that leads me into the next book, which was The Serpent in the Wings of Night, which is by Chris Broadbent. I loved this. This was so good. This is a vampire story. She is a human girl who enters what is basically the vampire Hunger Games. <laughs> I know that's not like the best way to describe it. It's not really like the Hunger Games, so it, you don't have to worry about that if you are. It's mostly a tournament that she enters where a bunch of vampires are basically just trying to kill each other until they can have a wish that is granted by the goddess of like death. I think it's the goddess Ni Nyaxia. I hope I'm saying these characters names right, but Aurea and Rain are the main characters. I really enjoyed their story. I like that Rain wasn't like some perfect man, especially since he is a vampire. It was just nice. I really liked the characters in this book. I found them lovable. I really enjoyed where the story went. I will say though, the ending was oddly, like it was satisfying, but it made it almost like you could kind of just finish reading there. You don't necessarily have to go in the next book, which I go to the next book, which I thought was interesting because I don't have that happen too much. Usually I feel like series end on such massive cliffhangers for me that I have to read the next book. I didn't feel that way with this one. I do want to read the next book. I just, yeah, it was weird. I didn't feel that way. And I thought that was different in terms of all the romanticy I've been reading lately, but this is also on Kindle Unlimited. So lots of really good free reads this month, especially if you have Kindle Unlimited. If you don't and you are someone who has like Libby or something, I highly recommend all these books, putting a hold on them. I think that's what you do. I don't have that here and I can't have that. Ooh, why? And I can't have that here. So Kindle Unlimited is where it's at for me. Last book I read in May was Swift and Saddled. This is by Lila Sage. This is a cowboy romance. This is the second in the Rebel Blue Branch interconnected standalone series. This was very, very cute. I really enjoyed it. I'll probably do a deep dive review on this. I did already with Done and Dusted. It was adorable. I found myself relating way too much to Ada. I think I can see how Ada would rub people the wrong way just through personally relating to her. Not everything I related to her about, but there were some things that Lila Sage wrote about her character that I was like, okay, like I needed to get out of my head now. It was just, it was uncanny. It was wild and it was such a good book. I was surprised. I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did. There are a couple things that made it not five stars for me, but it was still really cute as far as cowboy romance goes. And I loved Wes. I thought he was great. And it was nice to see all the characters together again. And I'm very excited for the next book in this uh, interconnected series. I think it comes out in November, but I'm really enjoying it as far as cowboy romance goes. I've only read Chestnut Springs outside of this, so yeah, I really, really have been enjoying this and I cannot wait for the next book. And then I think there's one more after that. The book bucket list item for this though was Wes basically takes Ada up to, I think like a cliffside spot where he parks his truck and then they either have a view of the sunset or they're stargazing, both would be great. And they put blankets down in the bed of the truck and they have all these different pies that they got from the local bakery where that's like near them and they try them all. Uh, I have never seen pie where I live, so I don't know if that would be possible. But I don't know, eating sweets in the back of a truck watching the sunset or stargazing. It doesn't have to be with a man, but just, you know, for fun would be incredible. So that is going on the book bucket list. However that happens, I don't know. Don't have a plan for a lot of these, but that one is definitely going on there. I thought that was so cute and it sounded so fun. And who doesn't want to eat treats and watch the sunset? sounds even more fun in the back of the truck with blankets. I, I'm i pretty sure I actually have this on my Pinterest board. I'll have to look at that after. But yeah, I, very, very cute stuff. Everything you kind of want a romance to have as far as like the cute cheesiness. So I would highly recommend that one as well. 
the last thing I read or really listened to was the Akatar, so A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I listened to the very first book's graphic audio on Spotify. That was awesome. I've touched on this before. It's basically like reading the books for the first time. It's a very visceral experience. Very, very cool. I really enjoyed it and I am just so excited to listen to A Court of Mist and Fury this month. It's just I'm kind of taking my time with that one because like I said it's like reading the books for the first time and I'm really enjoying that. So I think yeah it's going to be an excellent reading month for June as well. If you haven't seen my TBR I will link that below too. And I'm still this was the only book I actually didn't finish reading on my TBR was The Cloisters by Kitty Hayes. This is on my May TBR. I started it at the very end of May but I am not very far in it. But I kind of like it. She, The book starts at the beginning of June and as I'm filming it that's the beginning of June. Just feels like the right time to be reading this so kind of got moved to my June TBR I guess. But yeah it was a really fun reading month. I hope you guys had a great May and I hope you have an amazing summer full of lots of really good books and really good reads and I'll talk to you soon.